let's start this exercise by opening a new file. In this case, I'm using an MS Beam Archicad template. I'll put the link in the description so you can download it. Um, we're going to start first by creating a new view that will, uh, our modeling will be based on. If you go to the project navigator and then under view map, there is a folder here which is a C civil. Most of us are dealing with uh, modeling the terrain and the river as a base of our bridge that uh, is coming on the next uh, video series. So I'm going to select this uh, folder and then I'll go down here to create a new view. I'll call it um, uh, Civil Topo and then layer combination will be a Civil Works. Create. Perfect. And then the next thing is to load a topo survey information from as a DWG file into this so that you can use it to model this um, uh, challenging terrain. So I'm gonna use um, uh, two different methods of loading uh, this information so that you can understand uh, the pros and cons of using one of those uh, approach. So in this case, I'm gonna go to file and then under external content, there is a uh, place external drawing. If you hit on it, so it will direct you to the folder where you want to locate your file. So in this case, I would, the five types is uh, DWG. So click on it and then open. Wait a sec. And then depending on the units you are using, in case you want to change, you can just access it from here. I'll hit place. So this wants me to click on the screen to place the I'll place it on this reference point. Click. Wait a sec. Boom, there we go. So if you zoom out, um, this is the information we've loaded. So if you can check, you click, it's just a solid uh, information. That's the disadvantages of using this place external content uh, approach because in this case, we want to access this uh, information independently. We want able to click um, this control lines and then so that we can define our river and, and the site terrain. So I'll delete this and then use a different method. So go back to file and then under interoperability, go to merge match the file so i'll click on it make sure also that the file type is uh dwg and then open so this information will pop out it wants us to specify how we want to place our content in this case we want to merge this content into this model space or into this uh, current view we've created i'll hit ok and then wait a sec here continue hit match this who want us to specify on the screen where we want to place this information. I'll place it on the reference point, which is very advisable to do that. Use this point as a reference. Click on it and then hit OK. Perfect. Now this is the information. If you look at now, you can, you can access this um, each and every um, element in this file, as you can see. So let's go through this information. We have a bridge here that cuts across the the river and then um, it has a roads on both sides and then we have contour lines that are along the floor of the river. Perfect. Now we need to create um, a terrain together with this river. So, But before we do that, we need to have um, a mesh or a terrain to transfer this information to. So we're going to use a mesh tool under design tool palettes check mesh tool and then if you go up here under geometry method i want to use the rectangular method but before you do that let's check on the settings first and then see here the structure of the material let's change it to the something like f because these are the previous settings of of this terrain and then i want us to um, adjust the height to accommodate the depth of the river as you can see the highest point here is 9.5 so I'll give you this 15 meters is fine the offset from base I'll say 0 and then um, there we go we're good to go and then hit ok perfect so let's now draw our mesh based on the rectangular input 
so I will just click the first point and then specify the second point just like this and then go to arrow tool let me just adjust the edges by offsetting the edges of this just to do that just to do this I want us to this to be very close to the information like so if you check let's mark you this my Q and then right click show my Q and 3D if you go down and fit the window this is what you get it's just the terrain now we need to transfer that information into this terrain if you go back to the floor plan or floor plan view let's deselect this um, my Q by hitting escape button so we need to transfer this information um, into our terrain or into our mesh. So to do that, we need to click or select the mesh and then go down to design tool palettes and activate the mesh tool. This is very, very important guys for your operation to be successful. You need to have the mesh on the plane or on the view to be selected so that you can activate the mesh. From here you hit um, space bar key to activate the magic wand uh, tool and then you can go ahead and transfer um, the points or this information into this mesh so this window will pop out it wants us to create uh, points because mesh or controls control lines here are defined with points so what we need to do by default it will give us this add a new points if you check here there's a list of uh, variables on how you can uh, really define your thing but this in this case we're gonna just leave it under fit to all regions and then hit ok from here I'll go ahead and do the remaining um, contour lines I'll just go like so and place just like that pretty simple and this one and then yeah I think that's the last one if you, if you go back to the 3d window you see this information is being transferred it's being embedded in this uh, uh, terrain or the mesh tool so now we need to define the value of this uh, contour lines to do so go back to the topo um, or blend view and then we're gonna start first by the deepest points of this river which is basically this um, center control line. I'm gonna pick one of the points. If you zoom in here, pick one of the points, this window will pop out. Um, it wants us to key in the height of this point. And then make sure you check um, apply to all so that information that we are inputting here is being transferred or applied to all these points instead of just going one by one and doing them. So in this case, I would say 9.5, sorry, negative 9.5. And then OK. Perfect. If you check on the 3D, this is what you get. Now, it's the, this is the deepest point of our river. So we can go ahead and now define the width of this river by doing the remaining control lines. So click on this one minus 8.5 go to this one also minus 8.5 like I said make sure apply to all is selected it's always checked and then let's go to that one minus 400 and then we have that one which is 150 This is minus 500 and then that should be 100 it's minus yeah, something like that and then hit ok if you check on the 3d window this is will be now your what the definition of your river perfect but if you check the presentation doesn't look um, all right it's, it's kind of messy there are too many lines that are crossing each other 
to get rid of this or to solve this situation let's select go to the arrow tool and select the mesh go to its settings and then under model let's check this under 3d appearance user defined sharp if you click on it and then hit ok these um, funny lines will, will disappear you remain with a neat and well defined um, contour lines perfect let's go back um, and uh, from this we're gonna add the the water so this we're gonna use a slab tool let's go to the design tool and pick a slab tool under the structure we're gonna change the material to something like water and then change the height to 9.5 as the height of our river and then yeah i think i'm good to go i'm, I'm gonna use this line the gray line so as a footprint of the water i'll just click on the space bar on the keyboard to activate the magic magic wand tool and then place let's check on the 3d this is what we get um as you can see here it's kind of uh, like messy we don't have a cleanup here or a perfect cleanup for this um, um, these two objects so what we need to do we need to um, clean up or solve this issue by using solid element operations so that you can subtract the unwanted or unnecessary information here but to do that we're gonna select this first this is key guys when you are dealing with solid element operations select the target first before you can activate the tool right i'll select this as my target um, and then i'll right click in the screen then go to connect bring solid element operations so this will bring this window you see now the the target is already defined what you need to know is to select the mesh and get it as an operator in this case we want to subtract this the, the down part of our, our water so that it can clean up well with this so the operation we're going to use is uh, subtraction with downward extrusion and then hit ok perfect you see now everything is nicely cleaned up you can get rid of the window and then you can check perfect now let's select it to solve this issue of material go to its settings and then we're gonna it's either you uncheck uh, the override service to use the surfaces of this material or you override with a surfaces already there so just find something like water then hit ok perfect as you can see nicely now one thing we need to um, look at here is the the levels of water we can't have unless it's flooding that's it can go all the way like that but let's select it and then drop it down by minus 2.5 so that we can have something uh, like this world defined or if you feel depending on what um, the results you want perfect I guess you learned a lot from this guys um, this will be the area where we're gonna continue our next video with we're gonna um, place or construct a bridge across this uh, river these two parts are the platform where the columns of uh, anchoring this bridge will be positioned that will be in the next video thank you guys for your attention um if you are new to this channel just do the right thing make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos like this thank you guys i'll see you in the next video tomorrow